Hello, grammarians. Today we're going to talk about subject-verb agreement. And what this is, is the idea that you want your subject and your verb to get along in a sentence. What agreement is in grammar is the art of making sure that sentence parts connect with one another in the right way. It's making sure, you know, that a um, square peg goes in a square hole, right? Not a square peg in a round hole, a square peg in a triangular hole. You want to make sure that um, the way you make, the way you render your subject fits with the way you rendered your verb. So what do I mean by that? So let's, let's take the sentence, the dog barks. So we have this subject, the dog, and it is singular. There's one of it. And the way this verb is, the word is conjugated, the way this verb is conjugated, the way we've assembled or figured out how the verb is going to be, is also a singular conjugation. Uh, so we say the dog barks and not the dog bark, right? This is not standard American English. Like this, this doesn't, this does not, this is the plural form. You can say the dogs bark, right? Because there's more than one dog here and this is their, this is their verb, this is the plural form. I know it's kind of strange that the third person singular form of a verb ends in S. Like if English made sense, like, if, okay, if I, if I ran the zoo, right, like, I would want it to work like this. The dogs barks, right, because there's an S, there's multiple. Unfortunately, for many weird reasons and the history of English, it, it doesn't, it didn't work out that way. A third person singular verb usually ends in an S. Right, so, I talk, that's first person, third person is she talks, we eat, that's plural, first person, they eat. See, no S. It's only this weird third person singular here that's got that S on the end. So if you're, trying to, if you're trying to figure out how to make something agree, if you're unsure as you're writing, so if you're looking at a, a sentence like the dogs bark, and you can't figure out if it's supposed to be the dogs bark or the dog barks or the dogs barks, ask yourself first, what is the subject of the sentence? So first find the subject. And then ask yourself, is it singular or plural? Is it S or P? Is it salt or is it pepper? And then if you can remember that, then just remember that singular S usually results in another S. So if it's the dog and that's singular, then you're gonna to wanna to put that S over here. So if the subject isn't a noun, but a pronoun, same question. Is it singular or plural? I is singular, there's only one me. We is plural, there's many of us. And if it's singular third person, so like she, he, it, uh, end it in an S. Another thing to remember uh, is that most what we call indefinite pronouns are third person singular. So if you wanted to ask whether or not anyone knows the way to San Jose as a question, but you're not sure uh, whether or not it would be, does anyone know the way to San Jose or do anyone know the way to San Jose? Well, the word anyone is third person singular. And although do is an irregular verb, we still kind of hold to the idea that a third person singular verb ends in an S, so it's a Z sound written as an S. Uh, so we would say does. So does anyone know? As opposed to, you know, if it were in the plural, do we know? Right, so does is singular, do is plural. And that's kind of the basic idea of subject-verb agreement, is you wanna make sure that the number of things in your subject matches up with the number in your predicate. So is the subject singular or plural? If it's third person singular, uh, the verb probably ends in an S, even though the third person singular noun or pronoun does not. You can learn anything, David out.